I am a girl with Asperger's syndrome. I'm the Aspie girl. Hi guys, it's Alexa. Welcome to my channel. As you guys may not know, I have Asperger's or high functioning autism. Having autism, I don't get certain social cues. Well, in this video, I will be talking about my experience with friendships while having autism. Let's get into it. I have always had trouble forming real friendships. Let's start with when I was little. I got diagnosed with high functioning autism when I was two years old. A few of our neighbors also had a two year old. So my mom and those moms formed a play group with me and their kids. Because I had autism, I kind of wanted to be independent and play by myself, like I was in my own world. I didn't want to play with the other kids in the playgroup. My parents enrolled me in preschool for children with special needs when I was three, and I became best friends with these two girls in preschool. They both had special needs. One of them had epilepsy while the other was born with a bad heart. I had tons of play dates with those two throughout elementary school, and the three of us were truly BFFs. However, the only reason why I got to have play dates with those two was because, like me, they had special needs, so I could easily relate to them. I have been mainstreamed since kindergarten, and throughout elementary school, barely any of the kids in my class wanted to play with me because I was different, and they were pretty much put off by it. Whenever I tried to join a child when they were playing, they would either treat me like I didn't even exist, or tell me to go away. There were a few kids in my class every year who were nice to me and talked to me in school, but I never got to have playdates with them. I got left out of those. My friends with special needs always invited me to their birthday parties, but I only got invited to other birthday parties if that child had to invite my whole class. I would have felt left out and hurt, but back then, I was just a kid and didn't know what being left out was. I did join cheerleading, gymnastics, and a swim team when I was little, but none of the kids at those activities wanted anything to do with me either. One of the only true friends I have ever had moved to another state when we were in the fourth grade. Now let's move on to middle school, the dark age. First of all, my best friend with epilepsy, let's call her Jay, transferred to a special school instead of moving up to the middle school with me. So it was hard for me to move on to a higher education without her. But she didn't move or anything, so she and I still got to hang out after school and on weekends, which was nice. So in middle school, I became friends with this girl. Let's call her S. S was so sweet to me in school, and I considered her my best friend at school. Then this girl, let's call her L, came along, and she and S became BFFs. I didn't really become friends with L until seventh grade, and then S and L became my two best friends at school. S and L seemed to like me in school and even called me their best friend. And I even talked to them on Facebook too. But they never invited me anywhere after school or on weekends. Even before L came along, S never invited me anywhere. S and L always hung out together after school and on weekends. But they never asked me to join them. It really made me feel left out. Especially since I always saw pictures of them together on Facebook and it really hurt my feelings to not be included. When I asked them to start inviting me places, all they said was that 
They see me in school all the time, so they don't need to invite me anywhere, and that their lives don't revolve around me. First of all, I was very close with them. They should have invited me places outside of school too. Second of all, I didn't want their lives to revolve around me. I just wanted to be included when they hung out. Not only that, but in seventh grade, S and L actually started harassing me at school. They did it for their own personal gain. It wasn't really bullying, it was more peer pressure. S and L found it funny and entertaining to make me do bad and inappropriate things. I, of course, got upset when they used peer pressure against me, but having autism and bad social skills, I didn't like to show how unhappy their peer pressure was truly making me. So I never told them to stop. And I truly regret not telling them that they were being mean and to stop. My family kept telling me that S and L were not true friends and to find new friends. But having autism, I was so clingy with them and couldn't let them go. I finally stopped being friends with them once they took the peer pressure to the extremes. I am not going to tell you what happened because it was unbelievably disturbing. Even though S and L never invited me anywhere, Jay still did. Jay has always invited me places and has always been a true friend. I'm lucky to have had a friend like her. I then had to move to another part of the state right before I started high school. Now, before I moved, my school district was a very clicky one. Growing up, the kids at school influenced me to be clicky, to only be friends with one friend group no one else. There were others in middle school who were nice to me and liked me, but I turned them away because I was just so clicky with S and L. I even joined gymnastics again, and there was a girl there who had the potential to be a friend, but I turned her away too, all because I was clicky. I really should have given those other kids a chance at being friends. Anyways, once I moved, I had to transfer to another school district that wasn't nearly as clicky as the last one. Now, in this district, you could be friends with anyone you wanted. There were no cliques or anything. In high school, my classmates were so nice to me, and most of them called me their friend, making me one of the popular kids at my school. However, despite being popular at school, I still never got invited anywhere. I even talked to them on Facebook too. When I was a senior in high school, my school had this privilege for the seniors where they could go off campus for lunch. I actually got invited to go off campus for lunch with friends several times. It really meant the world to me that despite having autism and the inability to drive, I got to go off campus for lunch just like the other seniors who could drive. However, my friends never invited me to hang out after school or on weekends, and it really hurt. It really made me feel left out. Especially when I would see pictures of my friends hanging out together after school and on weekends on Facebook. When I asked my friends to start inviting me places, they always made excuses like, I never do anything with friends after school or on weekends, I don't have a social life, or I have to work after school and on weekends, even though I clearly saw pictures of them hanging out. Or, my friends would say that they want to hang out with me, but the actual hanging out never actually happened. When I asked my friends if they wanted to hang out after school and on weekends sometime, they said yes, but it never actually happened. It made me feel left out. Whenever I would see other girls my age hanging out with their friends at the mall, as well as pictures of other girls my age, and their friends together. All I thought to myself was, I wish that was me. It really hurts not to be included, especially since even the mean kids without special needs get invited places by friends. As of now, I go to a school just for people with autism, 
and my friends with autism actually understand my autism and actually invite me places. You would never believe how unbelievably happy I was to finally be getting invited places by friends. Also, I recently reconnected with Jay through Instagram. I miss her so much and plan on reuniting with her soon. If only people knew how much their peers with autism just want to be included. That's it for this video. If you don't have special needs, I hope you learned something from this video. And if you have autism and are experiencing something like that, just know that you are not alone. If you like this video, please subscribe for more videos on my channel. I post a new video every Friday. If you have any questions or requests for upcoming videos, please comment them down below. Also, if you're autistic and you have been left out because of it, feel free to share your story in the comments below. If you don't have special needs and you have a friend with autism, you may think that seeing him or her in school is enough. But really, you have no idea how left out and hurt your friend with autism feels because you never invite him or her anywhere. Do your friend with autism a favor and start inviting him or her places. You will never believe how much it'll mean to him or her if you start inviting him or her to hang out after school, on weekends, and even during summer. Also, if you're autistic and your neurotypical friends won't invite you places, even though they know you want them to invite you places, try to find some friends who also have autism. They'll understand what you're going through way better than your neurotypical friends. So they are more likely to invite you places. Thank you for watching. Bye.